Okay, so this is uh, our coding exercise trying to show you why the length of the DNA word matters. And the, uh, the basic idea is the well, I'm going to show you you have a one letter word, two letter word, three letter word, eight letter word, and how often do we expect to find them in some uh, random DNA sequences. So now hopefully after the exercise you can you can you can be convinced the longer a DNA word is, for example, the longer the restriction on that side is, the less frequently you will find it in DNA. That's basically it. So now to do this exercise, you actually need to install some package first. You need to install two packages called uh, sequence in R or ADE4. Now, sorry, let me install that. Uh, I think I installed a wrong computer. This one. Okay, see. It's now say install package at the bottom. Which code did you run? I run. I highlight this two line and then run it. R yeah. R this value where? Is it R code for DNA or is that one? Uh huh. Yeah. So and then I okay. call the library in. Now I have loaded this library into R. So. Yeah, somehow the screen is cut off a little bit inside. Uh, and so right now you have to make sure your uh, session uh, is in the current working directory. So in my case, I'm going to make sure the session setting work dire working directory to the source file location. Uh, once you do that, you, you can actually look at the current file. You can actually see the file in your current working directory. And and then I'm going to read uh, the plasma DNA sequence into R, that PMS2.C. That's the sequence we have been using for AP uh, analysis. So once I load it into this, uh, the sequence is there. Uh, I'm going to take the first sequence, and because that uh, by default is actually treated as many sequence. I'm taking the first sequence, that's the uh, you can actually look at the first sequence there. They should be 9,300 something. Those are all uh, PMSH2 plasma sequences. Uh, it's Wait, yes, I'm recording. Uh, so, so, well, it, it, I'm basically showing what's under the hood. You, how do you think APE do the analysis? APE do the same thing, except that you you don't see it because you click and uh, you, you will see things happen. But this in R you actually see how things happen under the hood. So so uh, I can I can print this one called C2S, just change everything into a character. That's the sequence you often see on APE. And if you want to see what C2S does, you just type a, a question mark and then run this. You will see on the right hand side, you will see the help. What does the C2S mean? It basically change all those uh, arrays into a long string of uh, sentences. Right. So there, that's it. And then we can start the exercise. So first, we can count the one letter DNA word. Well, one letter DNA word basically is the ATCG, right? This is just to give you a, uh, right. So how many ATCG in the PMS2 plasma you're going to count? There's 2,888 A's in one direction. Because when you, you think about when you count it, you basically, the DNA is complementary. There are two strands, but we are only counting one direction. So that's the ATCG. And if we sum this whole thing up, that should be 9,325. That should be the length of the PMSH2 plasma. In, in fact, that's exactly the case. That's the PMS2 plasma. And then we start, a, uh, uh, actually here's another exercise. You can use R to find the reverse complement sequences. What do you think the reverse complement sequence of ATG is? It's actually a very funny word, <laughs> it's cat. I was, uh, I was very amused by this. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. It's actually, this is uh, the same, this exercise is going to also help you do the next uh, restriction enzyme exercise because you are, it's <coughs> asking you to find a compatible restriction enzyme site. Right, so, okay, 
what's the complementary sequence of ATCG? That would be CAGT, right? So you, you can just highlight, click, run, you will see it at the bottom. GAATTC, that's the equal R1 uh, restriction and that. Now, the funny thing is, if, if you look at reverse complementary sequence of GAATCC, what do you see? It is still GAATCC. Right? It's exactly the same. No matter, you look at it from left to right, right to left, it's the same. That's the palindrome. Exactly uh, uh, interesting feature of the restriction and the replication site. And so, by doing this, I basically say the PMSH2 plasmid. I'm also going to generate uh, RC for reverse complementary sequences. Th that way I can analyze both sequences and you can compare them. Okay, so if we do that, I can count the, eight, the nucleotide sequence in both the sequence uh, again. So, so at the top, that's the uh, original sequence, AT, uh, ACGT. At the bottom is the reverse complement. You can see the, well, Oh, uh, at the top is the reverse complement, and bottom is the original sequence. So in the original sequence, you have a 2A88 uh, nucleotide A, but in the reverse complement, you have 2,888 T. That means the, the uh, that means the conversion is perfect. It's it's correct. Double checking this is correct. Okay, now we can count the two-letter word. Okay, in the one-letter word, you have 2,000 something. In the two-letter word, how, how many do you expect to see? You should see about 25% because each, each letter has four possibilities, right? You have one position, one position, there are four possibilities. You have another position, you have another four possibilities. So all together, one letter you have four possibilities, two letter you have 16 possibilities. So the frequency now should be about 400 to 500. There, that's uh, <coughs> what well, the number is not even, but it's roughly the same. So some of the 400, some 300, some of the 600. It's, it's not even, but the average should not be around 500 something. We can actually count the mean, see whether, yeah, the mean is about 580 something. So we, and we can count the reverse complement. You can double check whether the TT, so TT and AA should be reversed here. So, well, TT is 1064, AA is 1064. Right? It, it's black and here, but it's, it is probably 1064. I just found out it, but I cannot tell you about the time. <laughs> okay. All right. So, then you can count the three letter word. The three letter word should be even smaller, should be. This time it should be 100 to 200. Should be even less frequent. Right, so that's a three letter word. The three letter word, you, you see the T, 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 now it's only, I only see 280 times. The longer it becomes, the less it frequent it becomes. Now I'm going, to, I'm going to let you do some exercise and see. Uh, I'm going to let you work on a four-letter word and five-letter word. Uh, so uh, after that, you can pause the video and work. So I'm going to go straight, for, straight to the six-letter word. For example, equal R1 side is GAATCC. So how many GAATCC do you see in uh, APE? So you can, you can use APE to find this one out. Uh, APE actually led you to pick the Pick these sequences, but I'm going to also use the R to find this one. GATCC, I see five times at the bottom. You will see it. Yes, five times. Five times. So if you you can verify using APE, it should also be five times. Now the funny thing is, uh, if I look at the reverse complement uh, strain, because GATCC. If you look at the reverse complement, it's exactly the same, should also be five times. This, thing, this doesn't change. But a four letter word, uh, for four letter word, we can do the count. What's the restriction? See, now the four letter word, this time you look, many of them is zero, because for the four letter word, some of them doesn't even occur even once in the PMSH2 plasmid sequence. Some of them occur only once. 
mostly is zero. So the longer the number is, the more unique it is. It's basically almost like the password. Right? When you set the password, you often say, yet your password is not long enough, you know, secure, that's give you a warning. That's basically the same thing. The shorter it is, the, the more easily people can guess. So, so the not one, the enzyme had a much longer sequences. Uh, oh, here, the not one side is GC, GC, GC. So, and the result is one. So not one cut this plasmid only once. Right. So that's the exercise. Uh, in fact, you can actually find all those one letter words, but those are all, uh, 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 all those eight uh, letter words occurred only once in PMS, PMS H2 plasmid, but not all of them is recognized by the restriction enzyme. Not one just recognize one of these. Okay. All right. I hope it's useful.